Alright, what up everybody? Your boy Game Day here. Today I'm doing Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. <sighs> I guess I'll start a series out of this. Um, I haven't played this game for a while. I mean, I beat it back then on the um, DS. Um, <laughs> my ex-girlfriend's DS. I actually beat the game before her, and she got really pissed. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I never owned a 3DS or a, a DS at all, unfortunately. So when I seen this come out on the um, WiiWare, like about a year ago now or so, I was like, yeah, I have to get this, you know what I mean? And they kept releasing them. So I have all the way up to Justice for All, or the third one that came out. I can't remember what the title, what the name is on the other one, the other two. I know one of them is Justice for All. I can't remember what the other one is. Anyways, this is uh, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Game day, baby. We're getting it in. By episode five. Hmm. Now I can't remember which one I was on when it comes down to this song. Let's go to the first one. Let's see. Now we'll go to the third one. No. What's on the second one? They're all the same. Okay, we'll go to the first one. And we'll go to a new game. First turnabout. Let's get it in. Hope you guys enjoy. There's a lot of reading in this game, but I don't mind this game. Um, gas, gas. I don't mind um, reading in this game for some reason. I don't know when I'll post. I don't know my schedule for posting this. Damn it, why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I gotta find someone to pin this on. Because I'm such a bitch. Yeah. Looks like I already been shot in my forehead. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. He already looked like Prince. August 3rd, 5.47 a.m. District Court. Defend Defendant Lobby 2. Defendant Lobby 2. Phoenix. Those boy, am I nervous. <clears throat> right. Whoops, wrong button. How do you go back? Okay. Ooh, sexy Mia, baby. Oh, hiya, chief. You're my chief any day. Woo! That's <laughs> like what he says. <laughs> so I'm glad you made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. I say a lot, I mean, it says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe him my current job. I Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out in any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's over. Yeah. Isn't that your client over there screaming like, uh, isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair, oh god. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die. Jump already. <laughs> it sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Nick. Hey, hey there, La hey there, Larry. <laughs> it's Mike Larry. <laughs> Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell him I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. You want to ride with me? What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finish. I can't live in the world without her. I can't. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? So this fool's over here tripping about a female that obviously has gotten murdered. He's tripping because she is gone and he can see her no longer. But he's obviously being one of the, um, um, what the fuck do you call it? I can't think straight right now. He's going, undergoing trial. Okay, sorry for that long pause. I'm on Nick, yeah, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. 
The newspapers say it was you. He's a suspect. Why can't I think of that fucking word? I, I had a brain fart. My bad. My name is Phoenix Wright, and I'm a boss. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young sexy woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was unlucky. It was the unlucky. What? I see. The guy arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Okay. Our school has a saying when something smells, it's usually the butts. Ew. <laughs> oh, 23 years. And fuck, man. I'm. I'm See, that's why I don't read so much. I always say this shit, and everything else that I do, I'm like, fuck, I get tired of reading. It's like, I, I say shit that's not there, I stutter, but you know, I really hope you appreciate me doing this once again, because it's not a fun thing for me to do. Okay, in 23 years, I've known him. It's usually been true, so he smells like ass. He doesn't know how to shower. He's a, he's allergic to water and soap. He has a knickknack for getting his himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. Like a fucking boss. Phoenix, right. Out. August 3rd, 10, um, 10 p.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Let's get it. Shut the fuck up. Court is now in session. <laughs> the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Prosecution is now ready, Your Honor, says Payne. Phoenix, the um, defense is ready, um, Your Honor. See, I like this game, man. I, when I did first play this game, I was like, what the fuck? It's going to be hard. And I remember, I think it was my, my ex-girlfriend's birthday. She got a DS for Christmas. So I was looking around for games for her. I'm like... Let's get her something other than typical fucking Mario. She already had the Mario game on there. So I was just like, let me look around. I think I got her I got her Cookie Mama and I got her um, this game. Um, those were the only two games out of the series from them two at the time. I'm uh, pretty sure she probably still has them. I don't know. I don't keep in contact with her. That was years ago. Um, but if she ever finds this video, haha, I'm talking about you. I beat your game before you. <laughs> Anyways, um, I fell in love with this game, so I hope you guys like it and people that haven't played it will actually give it a try and look for other installments in the series. Uh, I think they're still making games for it. I mean, I see all kind of outlets from it, but let me continue. Sorry. Um, the defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> About time, motherfucker. Mr. Wright. That's right. Is this your first trial? Is it not? This is your first trial, is it not? Is your beard right? Um, yes, Your Honor. I'm, I'm a little nervous. Don't say that shit out loud. Your conduct during this trial will, be decided to, will, be, will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for the client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Don't shit in my court. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Better not shit in my court. Mr. Wright, <laughs> given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to assess... Uh, to assess your uh, readiness. Assertion? I don't know. Um, yes, Your Honor. Go. Handshaking. Eyesight fading. Beam me up, Scotty. The test will um, consist of a few simple questions. Um, answer them clearly and con concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in the. Um, see, please state the name of the defendant in this case. I am defending Larry. Uh, we all know that. I am Phoenix. My chief mentor is Mia. Or Maya? I think it's Mia. Defend it well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Harry Butts. How funny. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what the victim's name. Tell me tell me what the victim's name. Tell me what What's the... Okay, once again, I'm saying shit that's not there. My fault. Whew, it was weird. I know this one. Glad I read the case report over. 
um, cover back cover to cover so many times. It's um wait oh uh oh no no way I forgot I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You said I was up to this in the hallway. What the fuck? You don't even know I'm up for something else. You don't even know the victim's name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the victim, of course, I know the victim's name. I uh, just forgot, temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the plus button to check it anytime, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I beg of you. Or I beg you. I'm begging you. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim? Push the plus button. Sydney, her name is Sydney. Let's see. Cause of death, lo uh, cause of death, loss of blood due to blood trauma. So it's Sydney. There's only one Sydney in here. They try to trick you with the cinder. Cinder block. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put her down. Um, the victim's name is Sydney Stone. Ah, correct. Now tell me what's the cause of death? died because she was hit with a blunt object. Now, once again, if you guys don't know how to figure that out, push the plus button, you go to the autopsy report, and it tells you right there. Cause of death, loss of the blood due to the blunt object, a blunt trauma. I already knew that, so hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt, blunt object? Correct. You answer all my questions. I see no reason why we should proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. I passed some gas. <laughs> because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question of prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain the court would you explain to the court what that object was? The murder weapon of the statue of this statue of the think was a statue of the thinker. Uh, it was fine lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts this into the evidence. Let's see. The statue added into the court uh, the court records. So if you want to check that guys, just go in there and you start and go into the court records and you read up on it. Right. Be sure to pay attention to the evidence added during the trial. The evidence is only ammunition you have in this court. Press the start button or the plus button to check the court record and do it frequently. As always, Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Bus, to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. I like how they make you sound like you're such a newbie and you don't know what to do at all. I mean, I guess they have to get you into the game somehow. So this is pretty cool. That's why I like this game. First time I ever played it, I'm like, damn, this is tight. You actually feel like you're about to do some lawyer justice shit up in here, but we'll see. I mean, I already beat this game um, like probably three times. I think my, my Wii got... I had to send my Wii in because um, the laser got fucked up and I lost all my data, so I had to re-download it and I beat it again there. So I beat it twice on here and then once on the DS. So that's three times. Let's just hope uh, he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <sighs> Excuse me if you hear me drinking water. I mean, if I gotta read, I have to keep my mouth undry. And not in that sense. Just I have to drink some water, so don't be acting weird on my video. See, Mr. Butts, is not true. Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? <laughs> he freaks the fuck out. Like any sane guy would. Hey, watch it, buddy. We we were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? Ooh. I was dumped. He said I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me, ever. Look at that smug look. Look at that fool's eye. It's like twitching and shit. 
poor thing. What's it to you anyway? Mr. But you describe as dip Mr. But what you describe is generally what it means by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them um, the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day of the, until the day before she died. Passport added to the um, court record. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Do no way. The victim was a model, but did not have the did not have a large income. It appears she had several sugar daddies. What the fuck? Sugar daddies? Or he goes, daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth all the way. Uh, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. What sh should I do? Should I wait and see what happens? Or should I wait? Or should I stop him from answering? Uh, we'll go ahead and see what happens. It might be better not to get involved in this one. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, no way. That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and I and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I couldn't control that. That thing was moving by itself. So if I didn't read it fast enough, then you guys would just have to read it off the screen. So my bad when that happens. Sometimes I don't know what that's gonna happen. I can't remember everything. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive. The accused. Let's see. I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not. This is so not looking good. The next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Did you not? Go. Well, did you go? I'm gonna start talking like a geek because this looks like a geek. Like, well, did you go or did you not? <laughs> oh, he's not the geek, but he is, a, he is pretty much a loser in this sense, but <laughs> with a name like Butts, he don't get no butts. Anyways, he he, I said, hey, he he, well maybe I did, maybe I did. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? Have him answer honestly, stop him from answering. Have him on, I'll have him go with the honest approach. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Er, uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts, dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so I, like, didn't see her. Again. <laughs> Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies the matter. Who is who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Say what? Shut the fuck up. Order, order in the court. <laughs> Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit. I don't know. That's how you say it. Sawit to the stand. Oh, Frank Sawit. You get his name? He saw it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Newspapers. Yes. Looking all chummy. Reacting all chummy with this rat bastard. Mr. Sard, you you may proceed to the, with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw that day of the murder. 
witness account, witness, witness testimony. Let's get it. So this is the part where I have to listen to what he says. Then I have to go back and question what he says. And if I see any gaps or holes or things that don't make sense, like how did you do this? How did you know? I have to press on it and I have to present um, um, evidence what happened or why I think he's lying. You get me? Or And you have strikes in this game. So if you fuck up, you will start over on the case. Let's see. He says, I was going to her door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing from an apartment. I thought he must have been in a hurry because he let he left the door open behind him. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I crawled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was within, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. I bet you didn't see shit. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you. I can't defend. I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Um, incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during blackouts? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those phones. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your uh, personal. What is that? For, for I don't know, some shit. Blackout added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright? Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross examination. Cross examination? Your Honor. Alright, right. This is it. The real deal. Um, what exactly am I supposed to do? The fuck is wrong with you? Well, you're supposed to expose the lies in the testimony with the witness that the witness gave. Lies? What? He's lying? Your client's innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Oh shit, how do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness to compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradiction between the, the court record and the witness's testimony. Then once you find out let's see. Then, once you find the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay? So remember, press the witness with the negative button or by waving the Wii remote. Then check your facts with the plus button and point it out. Point out the contradiction. Okay, when I first did this, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, I understand what she's saying, but how's this gonna work, you know? So, you just chillax and read. I see, I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing at the apartment. So right now I'm gonna press him to see if I get more information about him going door to door. See, isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Uh, heh. I don't know, he just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Just like, a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. The defense requests that that witness refrain from the conjecture. Conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? So basically, he's just going through his whole testimony over, and I'm picking what I want to talk about. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left with the door halfway open behind him. Now, how would you know he came out the door? Though that's my thing. Half open, you say? Yes, yes, the door was half open. Um, what's the word? It was, half, it was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came No one came to close the door. That's odd in a big city like this, I thought. I see. 
and what happened next. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Whoops, let's not try to do that yet. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was halfway open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there, and it's, it's the same thing. True words have never been spoken. Anyone, anyone who would look inside, anybody, anyone would look inside. Hmm. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So he looked in an apartment. What happened next? I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. Let's press that. Are you sure she was dead? Well, no. I guess I wasn't. Well, she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look to be fatal to anyone. Very well. What happened next? I closed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Let's see, so you didn't touch anything in the apartment. And I like how they outline anything that gives you a hint that there's something wrong here. You say he didn't touch anything in the apartment. Um, yes, I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. See, you thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please listen to the rest of the testimony. Uh, you thought to call the police, what happened next? However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, it, no, it wasn't, right? But you say you didn't go in the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh, that. I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf on the entry in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried to use that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? You just say you didn't go in, though. Okay, I guess you didn't go in. I went to a nearby park and found the public phone. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer from the nearby apartments. All right, what time did you call again? I remember the time exactly, it was 1 p.m. 1 p.m., are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right, doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. Okay, let's go ahead and check. So we're gonna look at, uh, let's see. Let's see how it does. She died between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Um, the statue, let's see. Let's see, a statue in the shape of a thinker, it's rather heavy. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris at, on the 7th or 30th, the day before the murder. Um, electricity in Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. Now, this is the evidence that I want, because he said the time was 1 p.m., but the, the um, blackout was at 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. So I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm going to go ahead and present Okay, Your Honor, what do you think about this statement? Um, it's not sure, I'm not sure I follow. It's clearly a contradiction to the um, I thoughts. So I fucked up. Now I lose one of my strikes up here. Okay. I'm pretty sure that was it, but I guess not. Let's see, let's go to the next one. The man who was the man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Sorry guys, I kind of have a stuffy nose. I don't know if you can tell. Um, are you absolutely 100% positive? Yes, it was him, no mistake about it. The witness says he was certain. Man who ran, well, okay. That's all of it. Must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Okay, I already did this. She wants me to, uh, she just tell me how to do it again. I'm glad she's there. Okay. Saw her lying there, a woman not moving dead. 
plate at the white side. Like that. Let's call the police immediately. Have the phone in her apartment with Orky. Let's see. Is it right here? Four to five p.m. Oh, the time of death was um, four, four to five p.m. But he said that she died at one p.m. So she died at four. Where is it? Time of death, four to four p.m. to five p.m. So it couldn't have been one p.m. Let's get it. You guys see how that worked? He said one o'clock, but the report says she died at four or five. So there's no way he's telling the truth. See, you found the body at 1 p.m. Are you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Cue in the pimp music, baby. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. I see the autopsy notes uh, notes the time of death somewhere after 4 p.m. There's nobody to uh, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Yeah. Oh, that. Oh. Uh, this is a trial. The witness merely forgot the time. Hell no, fuck that. After the testimony, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> I just saw it. Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, gee, that's really a good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradiction. Lies always get bit, oh, uh, lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give the testimony again? I don't like how they let these fools keep fucking making up bullshit, but this is how it goes. So here we go. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but there's a three-hour... I see. Oh, but there... But, yeah, I'm fucking confused because I'm thinking, if you heard something on the TV, didn't she have a blackout? So how would you hear the TV? <laughs> Anyways, he goes, oh, but it was a three hours off, wasn't it? So he's trying to say the TV was three hours off, but I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program, even though the electricity is off. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. So basically, they're going to forget that they said that they had a blackout. Hmm, I see. You heard the voice saying the time was tape was on the tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Mr. Wright, you know what to do. I got this one. Just chillax and look pretty. Time of discovery, baby. Phoenix versus this idiot. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time press. You say you heard, not saw. Yes, I heard. And I saw the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else, least of all, least of all my watch. Hmm, isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something, but if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't have heard anything at all. The witness did say he actually heard the time. It's ludicrous to suggest he wouldn't have heard anything. Hmm, I have to get I have to agree with the prosecution. Witness, continue the testimony. There was a voice saying the time. It probably was coming from the television. Are you sure it was the television and not the not a radio? Well no, I guess it might have been a radio. Okay, I guess they're trying to cover up. Incidentally, there was a no radio at the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but it's something about this that seems fishy. Something about hearing on the television. 
the witness has testified he heard the he heard the time. Okay, I'm not even gonna read the rest of this shit. Cause I think what I was saying earlier before about there being a blackout, so there should be no time. There should be no time. They shouldn't hear any of the devices unless they're um, battery operated. So let's get it. I'm trying to shake the fucking remote, but it won't work. So I don't want to push the button. I like to shake it like a point and just like Phoenix right here. So I actually have my screen pointed to the screen when I when I flick the remote. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this recording, this record proves it. Yeah, shake it. Shake what your mom gave it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Garg. Gargamel. I will, uh, er, uh, er. Uh, <laughs> the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation, explanation for this, Mr. Saad? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Arg. <laughs> Wait, I remember now. Of course you do. Mr. Saad, the court will prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the beginning, from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. And you got a wig on. I see, my apologies, Your Honor. It, er, uh, I must have been, have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Saw. I'm tired of hearing the shit. Let's hear about your testimony. Let's hear your testimony once more. It's your last time to tell the truth, fuck. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, was, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine examine the witness. Gladly. Hearing the time. See, actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. That strikes me as very suspicious. As a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. Only just remember that table clock. A table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? A table clock? Was there, was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon, the killer used the... The murder weapon, the killer used it to hit the victim. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock. That was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did, did you doze off in the middle of my testimony somewhere? Or something? Something's fishy here. That must have been what I saw. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I guess I'm, I guess it just slipped my mind. I'm not really sure how it happened myself. The witness says he saw the table clock in a story. Now, find a contradiction. Okay. Table clock in the apartment. Murder weapon. Killer user, the victim. Must have, that must have been what I saw. Murder weapon and the killer used it to kill the victim. This is the murder weapon, right? A statue. A statue. A statue in the shape of a thinker. It's rather heavy. Let's see, the victim apparently arrived. Blah blah blah. Let's see, electric electricity. Let's see, time of death, cause Cause of death, lost blood due to a block trauma. The murder, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. There's a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Actually, you didn't hear the time I saw it. I swear it's one of these. See, a statue. 
Maybe it's this one? It's either this one or the next one. That strikes me a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I just remembered that table clock. Table clock? See, even he said it's a table clock. He's like, so I'm gonna go ahead and present this. Ah, I guess that wasn't it, so I'm gonna lose another strike. It's either this or the next one. Okay, okay. All right, we didn't win anything on that one. Murder weapon to kill use. Must have been what I saw. I'm gonna play this one more time. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? See, I guess the mind slipped my mind. I'm just not really sure how it happened myself. Witness says he saw the table clock in the story. I see, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. See, the murder weapon. Yes, the table clock was used as a weapon. That's what I said, it goes off. Okay, let's go ahead and present it right there. Because how would you know it's a clock? It doesn't look like a clock to me, it just looks like a statue. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was, it, it was this statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Yeah, that fool whole demeanor change. Look at him, he looks like a whole different person. You with your objections and the evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Saw it. Hey, I saw it there. I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, um, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. Just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as, as a statue. My apology. You fucking coward. I'm trying to fucking stand up for him. Don't allow this shit. Fucking Santa Claus reject. I see. So the murder weapon has was a table clock. It was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with the testimony now? I sure do. How did you know this is a clock if you never stepped in the fucking house? See, Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock to hold it in his hand. Exactly. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Wow, that was a fucking huge jump. You struck her in the head with the clock, and the shock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in a motherfucking court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Prince was here. Sound. <laughs> the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim, the voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What? What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at your witness's face. Bitch. Looks like a bitch. Nigger! Would the witness please care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that's that day I never... Look, I, the clock, I heard no, I mean, I saw... Grrrg! Attack of the wigs. Shut the fuck up, I hate you. I hate you all. <sighs> it was him, I tell you, I saw him. 
He killed her and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Man, this fool does not want to go down. Order, order. In the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claim. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, your claim your, you claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I better think it, I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound of Miss of Mr. Sawit uh the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply examine the clock's batteries, ask the neighbors, try sounding the clock. Let's go for that. Let's sound the clock now. Here in this park. Your Honor, may I have may I have the clock? Ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That's certainly a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. White? Mr. Payne, could you tell the Tell me what the what time it is now. It's 11:25. So let's see. Eight, nine, ten. The clock is three hours off. Ah. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the uh, deficiency between the what Mr. Saw had and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Saw, it, try to talk your way out of this one. Huh. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh oh. What's he talking about? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Hmm, he's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the. Uh, crucial evidence to support your claim. Fuck. Yes, Your Honor. This means I can't let you indict indict the witness indict. See, unfortunately, this ends a cross-examination of Mr. Frank saw it. I come all this way down here to testify and look what the fuck happens. They treat me like fucking criminal. Fucking criminal. Criminal. Um, your lawyers, your you lawyers are all slime. Grr, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, you saw it, says Mia. Maya. Bang bang boogie. Maya, I mean Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's not over. I can't pro it's over. I can't provide I can't provide. I can't prove the clock was was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um well yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste your time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think it through. Ask yourself, why is the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? <laughs> Can you think of a reason why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes, you just got back from a trip. Out of state. Out of country. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, Mr. Wright. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright. You say the clock was already running slow three days, or running slow the day of the murder? Have you found the evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that provides you with the clock running slow. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris the day of the murder. Let's get it. The victim had just returned home from abroad 
the day uh, from abroad, abroad, the day before the murder. As we know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. there, it's 1 a.m. here, next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since she was returning home. That's why the time you heard was struck dead. I see, that's why the time you heard what that's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saad? Or should I say, Mr. Did it? Yarg. <laughs> order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned into a different. It's turned out differently than we expected. Mr. Payne, your client, he uh, he was arrested and taken away, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quick, so quickly, and find a true culprit at the same time. That's right. You're fucking with a G. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only this is only a formality. But the court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Now get the fuck out of my court. You stink. And with that, the court is adjourned, says Santa Claus. It turns out that Frank Sawyer was a common burglar. He possessed a newspaper. He poses a, he posed as a newspaper salesman to check to see when people were out of their house. That day, when Larry went to the apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawyer let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Saw grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find, and bam, whammo, right outside the dome. Poor thing. August 3rd, 2.30 p.m., District Court, Defendant Court Lobby 2, Big Apple. <laughs> Let's see, woo. Woo. I don't know what to say right there. Woo, I don't want to say woo. I can just do that, but I always want to say the word. I still can't believe we won. I like this music. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You forgot your own battle. You fought your own battle in there. You fought your own battles in there. Let's see, this has been a while since I've seen the trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief look this happy. Looking this happy, if she's this glad, imagine how Larry must be feeling, or how Larry must feel. My life is over. I'm still obsessing over this trick. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong with you now? Ah, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is over. But... But my Sydney Wendy is gone. Man, gone forever. Larry, she was a... <laughs> Never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can, I can uh, practically see the headlights saying now, Harry Butt's innocent. Hey, um, thanks. I really owe you one. Won't you holler at the chief? She's free. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner. Movie? My treat? Oh no, I couldn't. Okay, nice try, Harry. Hey, I was I was the one who got you off the hook. <laughs> so yeah, he's not thinking about you, buddy. He's thinking about the chick. Unfortunately, for you. You can't get a free dinner. Oh hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't the evidence, wasn't that the evidence that, actually I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you, I'll keep it as a memento. 
Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't make me... Don't... Let's don't, see. Don't that make you want to just cry? Sob. Larry. Are you sure? Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I think she thought he thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm not sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? I hate when I do that. <laughs> don't you have something to show? To show your friend something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Oh, well, she had your statue. Check this out, Larry. Proof, proof pos positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is a clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Hmm, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. And that is probably all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock. Uh, clock to be traveling, to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made. Let's see. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right. I hope you still. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also. Hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. In order to believe in them, you must have... You have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. Ooh, yeah, baby. Now you talking? We'll drink. To, we'll drink a toast um, to innocent to the innocence of butts. Yeah. So yeah, I get the thing. She says she couldn't go out with with Harry, but she then she asked me out. So who's the G, baby? Who's the G now? Oh yeah. Speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part, at least. You have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over your drinks? Very flirtatious. And so, my first trial came to an end. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's, all, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me unless you count the clock he gave Mia. Or Maya. Mia? I didn't know it then, but the clock was soon going to be the center of another incident, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. A brand new episode has been added. This first turnabout's over. The Turnabout Sisters is the next event that I will be going to. Go ahead and save this. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. Every time you beat it, they show a different um, artwork of the um, chapter or whatever. So yeah, um, thanks for watching guys and um, please support this. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help your boy out. It's game day, baby. So I don't know what I'm going to be posting. Um, what time schedule I'm going to have for this. But if I keep going on like I do right now, like every video I post might be one or two videos, depending on how long the case is. Um, I might have them in two parts, or I might just do a whole one like I did on this one. Uh, we'll see. But um, thank you for watching, and thank you, and please stay... Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned. All right, then? It's game day. Peace.